All right. Now, if you plan on taking any college-level math, and I'm talking about uh, courses like uh, pre-calculus, college algebra, and even calculus, well, you definitely need to understand this right here, and we're talking about the binomial theorem. Now, some of you uh, may uh, be familiar with the binomial theorem because uh, this is often taught in high school in uh, courses like Algebra 2. But uh, when you study the binomial theorem at that level, you're only kind of doing more basic level problems. But uh, as you get into pre-calculus and beyond, well, you do um, much more interesting problems with the binomial theorem. Okay, so all of this right here is the actual binomial theorem. Matter of fact, I'm actually uh, not putting everything about the binomial theorem here. So if you don't understand this, no big deal. Matter of fact, let me give you a fast introduction about uh, the binomial theorem. Okay, so what is the binomial theorem? Well, we're talking about a binomial in algebra. So a uh, binomial or simple example would be something like x plus y, right? So we have a uh, polynomial with two terms. So the binomial uh, theorem is all about taking a binomial to a certain power. So let's say, for example, I have x plus y squared. Well, to find the answer here, I just take my x plus y and multiply it by itself. So I could use a technique like FOIL or some other uh, multiplication method to actually find the product of x plus y times x plus y. No big deal. But uh, how about uh, this problem, x plus y to the seventh power? Well, this is not a fun problem to do, right? Because now we have to take x plus y and multiply it by itself seven times. So that is a lot of work. And uh, the binomial theorem is all about uh, finding powers of binomials, okay? But uh, again, as I indicated, uh, the types of questions you can uh, have with the binomial theorem get uh, pretty complex, and you certainly need to be able to work, you know, with this level of math, you know, in these courses that I mentioned, okay, uh, particularly like pre-calculus and calculus. All right, so what I'm going to do here is show you a problem, a kind of basic level problem about the binomial theorem, and this comes from my pre-calculus course. So if you are uh, struggling with the binomial theorem, don't uh, feel, you know, alone, because I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of uh, really strong math students, you know, find the binomial theorem a bit difficult. Now, in my pre-calculus course, I actually have uh, uh, several hours of instruction on the binomial theorem. All right, so really comprehensive lessons and uh, fully explained video solutions. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at one kind of basic level problem about the binomial, binomial theorem from my course. But again, you know, there is a lot more to learn. And I can tell you right now, if you are uh, going to be taking a college level math course, you will definitely need to uh, understand the binomial theorem. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into, get into this uh, problem right now. Hello, welcome to the video on binomial theorem. This is our second example set, example set B. And at this point in your study of the binomial theorem, you definitely want to have mastered both lessons of the binomial theorem. We had two just because there was uh, so much uh, to talk about. Uh, so definitely, uh, you know, at this point, before you get into these problems, make sure you got all that material down. And then um, obviously we did a, a previous example set on binomial coefficients. So we're, what we're going to be doing here is actually uh, getting to what this topic is about, right? The binomial theorem. Uh, and we're going to be using the binomial theorem to expand uh, particular binomials. That's what this uh, whole thing is about, right? We have binomials. We want to take them to a certain power, i.e. expand them. And we want to save ourselves a lot of pain <laughs> through a lot of multiplication by using the binomial theorem. And it's actually just it's an amazing theorem uh, and it's, you know, it's connections to other parts of mathematics and whatnot are, it's, it's extremely important as well, but there's a lot of beauty in it because just imagine, I mean, we're able to really save ourselves time by just following the formula. And as you practice the binomial theorem, it actually becomes easier and easier. Now, I wrote out all the uh, solutions here to the problems because it would just take too much time. So, um, if you have a question on something, you need to go back and maybe reference some things we talked about in the lessons, i.e., um, binomial coefficient, etc. But uh, I 
we'll pretty much walk you through how we got uh, the answers to these problems. So let's start with our first one. So we got a good amount of work here to take a look at, a good amount of problems. So here's our first one. We want to do the expansion on a plus two cubed. Now you could obviously take a plus two and let's just quickly conceptually recall what we're trying not to do, right? What you should not be doing is going, okay, I'm going to just calculate this out because I don't want to work with the binomial theorem. So I'll just, you know, do all this multiplication and get the answer. Yes, you could do that, but I don't want you to do that. Okay. Because that defeats the purpose. So what we're going to be doing, well, it defeats the purpose of learning the binomial theorem. So on these easier problems, instead of doing this stuff, we're going to, uh, use the binomial theorem because what if this was a plus two to the 30th power? Okay, now this becomes entirely not practical to be doing this um, uh, amount of multiplication, right? So with that being said, here is the answer and we're going to get right to it, okay? So I'm assuming, once again, that you have a really solid understanding of the binomial theorem through the lesson and uh, what I'm going to be talking about is going to make sense. Okay, so here's a plus two uh, to the third power now, what I'm going to uh, first do is I'm going to concentrate on just the binomial coefficients, okay, for uh, for this, the power of three, okay, which would be the same as row three of Pascal's triangle. So we know that this is going to, if we have a power of three as uh, this is our power to the binomial, we're going to have four terms, one, two, three, four terms in our answer, right? It's always this plus one is how many answers we're going to, um, how many terms are going to be in our answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus on temporarily, I'm going to get these binomial coefficients down. So I would have to calculate three, zero, three, one, three, two, three, three, right? I start with the zero term, then the first, second, and third. So these are my binomial coefficients. This is what we focused on in the previous example set. And these binomial coefficients, remember a coefficient, if I have a term like, let's say this, right, 6a squared, all I'm focusing on is getting these numbers, this, the 6, that's the coefficient of this term. So I'm just getting the coefficients to the, the answers right now. Now, uh, the coefficients are just going to be... Um, kind of temporary uh, in the sense that there may not be the actual numbers in our final answer because we might be doing you know some calculations with some other values that are going to affect our final coefficients but we need those binomial coefficients from uh, Pascal's triangle okay so just concentrating row three so here's three zero three one three two three three and I know the coefficients are going to go in front of the variable part so let's just write them down here okay and so now my brain is kind of organized. Okay, I got my coefficients down. Now I can focus in on the powers, okay, the, the actual variable parts. So remember, we're going to start, always start with the highest power of this first component of the binomial, okay, this first part of the binomial, which is A. We're going to take this to the third power. That's what I have right there, okay? And then here, this guy is we're going to write it down, but that's going to be the zero power. You always start, whatever this number is, if it's three, this is going to go, our very first uh, term is going to be a cubed times two to the zero because all of these exponents, these exponents here, have to add up to three always, okay? So this is our first term. Now we just have to follow the pattern. And what is the pattern? Well, the next term, okay, as I scoot over to the right, I'm going to drop the a cubed down by one. That becomes a squared. Okay, so I'm, the pattern is I'm going to start decreasing this guy by one. So I have a squared here, and then I'm going to increase this guy here to the right, which would be two. Okay, this one here by one. So I still get three. Two and one is three. And if you understand that, then all you have to do is just follow the pattern forward. Okay, so. Here I'm at a squared, so I'm going to drop it down again. So this is going to bring me to a1. I'm at 2 to the uh, first power here. So this is going to bring me 2 to 2 uh, to the second power here. Again, just to check, 
hey, that this is going to be three. And you should do this. It's so easy to make a mistake as you probably maybe uh, already experienced one. So when you write all this down, before you do actually any calculations, make sure you wrote the exponents correctly. Okay, one is going to be decreasing, the other one's going to be increasing. All right, so now we get to our last term, and we, we're going to end with, this is a uh, to the first power, so this will be a to the zero, and then this will be two uh, cubed. Okay, now, uh, just as kind of to break away here for a second, we always know that our very first term is going to be this guy to this power. So this is going to be a cubed, and then our very last term will always be this this part of the binomial cubed. So in this case, it's two cubed or eight. Okay. So you can always get the the two extremes of the answer, but I want to conceptually write it out for you so you see what's going on with the pattern of uh, the binomial theorem. Okay, so now once we have all this written out, we're like, okay, let's go and do the, our calculations. And at this point, excuse me, at this point, um, I'm not going to um, explain how we get the binomial coefficient answers. This is something, a uh, skill that we worked on a lot, so you should know how to do this. Review if you need to review. So 3, 0, that particular binomial co coefficient is 1. 3, 1 is 3. 3, 2 is 3, and 3, 3 is 1. Now, of course, you can go to row 3 of Pascal's triangle and just get these binomial coefficients, or you, you need to obviously know how to calculate these directly. So now I can follow through and look at a cubed times 2 to the 0. 2 to the 0 is 1, right? So this is simply just going to be 1 times a to the cubed, or a uh, cubed. Pretty straightforward stuff. All right, so let's move on to our next one here. <clears throat> this would be, and I'm talking about this term here, right? I'm going to focus in on it a little bit better. So I have 3 times a squared times 2 to the first. So 2 to the first is 2. So i got to multiply that 2 times that 3. So that's going to give me 6a squared, OK? So now we'll focus on to our next one here. So this is going to be 3. That's our binomial coefficient a to the first times 2 squared. Okay, so I have to really think about these numbers being squared. So 2 squared is 4. So in 4 times 3 is 12. So that's going to give me 12a. Okay, and then of course we talked about this last one will be 8. But 3, 3, that binomial coefficient is 1. 8 to the 0 power is also 1. So 1 times 1 times 2 cubed is 8. And there is our answer. Okay, so uh, pretty you know easy problem to start off with, but again, the binomial theorem can get tricky if uh, you know you're not writing everything out nice and neat. I like uh, this approach of write out the binomial coefficient. Sometimes you can kind of skip writing all this out. You can kind of just you know do it in this manner. Whatever is you know uh, a better method for you. Don't feel shy about writing out an additional step just to get your binomial coefficients and then putting them into the binomial theorem and then simplifying. Okay, so that's really going to be up to you. Let's move on to our second problem. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in advanced math, check out these courses right here. So these courses, Algebra 2 and College Algebra, these are effectively the same level of mathematics. So whether you take my Algebra 2 or College Algebra uh, course, you're going to get the same material. Now, if you are further along in math and you need to study like advanced trigonometry and other topics, then check out my pre-calculus course. All right, so I'm going to leave uh, links to all these courses in the description of this video. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.